Oi Brasil, olho aqui de novo para vocês com mais uma entrevista maravilhosa. E dessa vez, estou convocando os fãs da saga After. Sim, After Depois das Promessas está chegando nos cinemas e a gente bateu um papo com Hero Finn Stephen. Sim, ele vai contar pra gente sobre as novas aventuras de Harden e Tessa. Sim, no novo filme, eles prometem muito romance, muita pegação, cenas calientes. E ele ainda contou pra gente um pouquinho da história que inspirou isso tudo. Dá só uma olhada no nosso papo com Hero Finn Stephen de After Depois da Promessa. How long have you been writing about us? I don't know if I can keep fighting to save him rather than myself. We need time apart. You can't just escape yourself by moving from one place to another. Do you? a bidding war for my book. So here we are, four movies in. How do you feel about saying goodbye to Harden? And what can fans expect of After Ever Happy? I think they can expect more of the same in terms of excitement, ups and downs, some steamy sex scenes, some, some very loud vocal arguments. And yeah, I mean, more of the same. If they like the first three, then they'll like this one too. And I'm not too sad saying goodbye. I'm, 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 there's elements of it that feel sad. And when we actually wrapped, you know, and stopped filming, it felt sad. But then I was always saying, well, that won't be sad because we'll come back and do press. And here we are again. And, and um, yeah, uh, I'm more trying to be grateful and happy looking back on all the good work we've done rather than be sad about the fact that it's coming to an end. So the films left forever yeah. as well, don't they? So the sex scenes, like you said, are a big part of Tessa and Harden's story. Did you guys talk before those scenes? Did you have any advice that you followed when you were doing them? How did it feel? Did you ever get shy about it? Um, yeah, before the first one, I was bricking it because anything that you haven't done before, obviously, especially something like that, you overthink it and, and yeah, it feels like a big deal. And then quickly you're in there with a bunch of not interested cameramen scratching their heads and on their phones. And then you're quickly like, this is just another scene that we just need to get done. <laughs> and then you, you kind of break it up. And a lot of the time, the camera position only works for that bit. And then we move over here and then now we need to reset up the camera. And then you're waiting back, so, you know, in a green room or whatever for 10, 15 minutes. And it becomes a lot less glamorous than you kind of expected it to be. And yeah, quickly working with someone like Joe as well and just a really experienced, cool team. It was very, very quickly, kind of just like any other scene, and there was, there was nothing to worry about. But on number three and four, we had an intimacy coordinator, and I don't think it felt like we really needed her. Her name was Corinne, and she was great. And I think it's kind of just like having a stunt coordinator or a dance choreographer. Sometimes you're fine without them, but you often do need them to just, you know, reinforce the like, meaning behind the scene so it doesn't feel like any other sex scene. And, and um, yeah, just make sure everyone feels comfortable. She's got breath mints there, ready. Um, so yeah, quickly it just becomes another part of the job and it's not as kind of weird or, or overwhelming or, or embarrassing or whatever as you might think it is. So last time we spoke, you talked a little bit about mishap you had doing a bathtub scene because of the cold. Did this new film had any mishaps like that during the filming of the sex scenes? Can you tell us a little bit about it? I don't think so, because we shot three and four back to back. I can't remember if I was talking in that interview about the bathtub scene in the earlier film, I think yeah. number, number two, but there's a hot tub scene in either three or four, I can't, I can't remember which one it fell into, because as I say, we filmed it as one long movie, so shooting out mm -hmm. of order as well, you forget. But yeah, going from, from freezing hot, freezing cold, sorry, to not even, it was minus temperatures, and then not even, we had to have, apparently it's better for your health to have lukewarm water rather than really warm water, which was almost just even more painful. <laughs> that, yeah, that came with its challenges. But no, I can't, I can't think of any other off the top of my head that were too challenging. As you say, four movies in, you'd think we've got the, got the hang of it and, and we know what to do, so. As you know, this story is a little bit about Harry Styles. And you've mentioned before meeting him, that you met him and he gave you a little knowing look about the role 
in April you saw him at Coachella and I was wondering is it a weird experience for you to meet the person that inspired this role that's so big in your career or is it just a normal experience? Yeah, no, it was definitely not normal. I didn't I didn't to be fair, when I like met him at the Met Gala, it mm -hmm. was really like the briefest of exchanges. So I still almost wouldn't really count it as like meeting someone, just a brief kind of hello. And then obviously at Coachella I just watched him, so I didn't I didn't I still haven't like met him and even like spoke about it but um he's a rock star like watching him at Coachella um he's like it's really it's really cool how much he can kind of like involve the crowd and obviously his music is everywhere and like you can't not sing along to as it was when it comes on and stuff like this so I have so oh, yeah. much respect for him he's a, he's a he's an absolute legend but um I do feel like it's quite nice that uh the books that the film was based on were initially inspired by him. And I think quickly yeah. the books, in the books, Anna Todd, the writer, quickly made Harden his own character, even though the inspiration came from Absolutely. it. And then obviously when we turn the films into movies, um, it's funny, an interviewer I spoke with previously today uh, noted on how he's obviously chooses to wear some kind of more flamboyant, colorful things and Harden is still in the all black outfit every single time. So it's nice to kind of see as much as it started with an inspiration, they're clearly like very different kind of kind of people at this point. But um, no, I have yet to chop it up with him about, about you know, the, the film itself and and, uh, and all that stuff. But no, I'm so happy that, that we've had the opportunity to do this thanks to the inspiration Anna got from him. And he's a legend, I, I love his work. He's a, he is a great. top guy. Speaking of Harding's all black outfits and everything, I think he's going through such a hard time in this movie he's going to some dark places how is it for you to access that mental state for him what inspires you to get into that place it is it is challenging at times it's funny how you can be filming a scene where you need to be in a very bad place and you get some really good news and then similarly you're so run down tired get some bad news and then you have to play a really happy scene it feels like they never coincide never never line up how you'd want them to but to get into that mindset now, um, I wouldn't say it's easy, but um, I'm so lucky to have played the role so many times, it does become a lot. It does become a lot kind of faster to, to tap into that mindset, yeah. You and Joe have amazing chemistry and it's so interesting to watch the ups and downs of Hardin and Tessa's relationship because of that. Uh, how do you guys tap into it? Is it an exercise or does it happen naturally? I think I know we've always said like good casting, but it does it does it does definitely happen naturally. Um, yeah, I feel like again you're so lucky to bring the same characters back to life so many times. By number four, it would be strange if you didn't have some sort of you know chemistry and understanding. But I know we've been told that that was kind of there from the start. And again, I just I, I put it down to good casting and me being lucky to work opposite a really really talented kind of co-star. So no, it's, it's been a, it's been a real pleasure to play my first lead role four times in a row opposite opposite Joe Langford she's great Gente que fofo hero ele pode ser o meu herói o my hero Gente a saga After despertou várias controvérsias por aí umas coisas muito sérias outras nem tanto mas a verdade é vocês estão preparados para se despedir de After o que será de nós depois de After qual será o After do After não temos não sabemos se você tá pronto, eu não sei, eu sei que eu não estou. Mas se você quer saber qual é o final da saga de Harding e Tessa, corre para os cinemas, porque eles já estão por lá fazendo o seu bom after. <risos> Piadas tão bobas que eu faço com o meu pai. <risos> bom, eu não sei onde você está assistindo essa entrevista, se é no Instagram, se é no YouTube, no Facebook, seja lá onde for. Por favor, engaja. Eles não estão entregando engajamento pra gente, gente. Antes a gente postava um negócio, um milhão de comentários, agora estão reduzindo tudo. Como é que a gente vai fazer? A gente vai ter que voltar a se encontrar pessoalmente. É isso. Estou achando que é isso. Então, por favor, compartilha, comenta, dá like, ativa o sininho, toca o sininho pra mim. Toca o sino! Toca o sino! É isso. Engaja aí, por favor, tá? Hashtag volta engajamento. Hashtag engajamento de after. Hashtag after do after. Beijo, até a próxima e me contem como é que foi o after pra vocês.
You weren't here when she needed you. Now you're making it worse.